Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Lizens. In this presentation, we'll explain what a Lizen, or Line Impedance Stabilization Network, is and how Lizens are used in EMC testing. To understand what Lizens are and how they're used, we first need to start by discussing so-called conducted emissions. Radio frequency emissions can be grouped into two main categories. Radiated emissions, which propagate over the air or through free space, and conducted emissions, which are propagated along a conductor usually a wire or a trace. In the EMC world, conducted emissions are generally carried in or out of a device via its AC or mains power cord. These conducted emissions can create interference in two ways. First, they can enter another device by being conducted in over that device's AC power connection. They can also be converted from conducted into radiated emissions, for example, when power network wiring or cabling acts as an antenna. So how do we test for conducted emissions? EMC standards such as CISPR 1612 and MIL standard 461 define the maximum permissible conducted signal levels, also called disturbance voltages, over different frequency ranges. For the most part, conducted emissions testing is carried out over the frequency range of 150 kHz to 30 MHz. In order to measure the emissions from an EUT, or equipment under test, a special device called a Line Impedance Stabilization Network or LISN must be used. As mentioned a moment ago, a LISN is used for conducted emissions testing. You may also hear LISNs referred to as an artificial mains network or as a V network. A LISN has three main functions. First, it provides a stable impedance, usually 50 ohms, on the mains end of the EUT's power cord. Another important function that a LISN provides is that it prevents RF signals on the AC power or mains network from entering the EUT via the EUT's power cord. And lastly, a LISN provides a port for attaching measurement instruments, such as an EMI receiver, spectrum analyzer, or oscilloscope. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll explain these different functions and how they're used in EMC conducted emissions measurements. Let's look at how a LISN is connected when making a conducted emissions measurement. The EUT, or Equipment Under Tests, power cord is plugged into the LISN and the LISN is plugged into the AC mains network. Our measuring instrument, here an EMI receiver, is plugged into the LISN's measurement port in order to be able to measure the levels of conducted emissions. Different types of LISNs may be required depending on the test standard and the equipment under test. For example, LISNs may differ in terms of things like their maximum current rating, frequency range, and the impedance that they present to the EUT. Some LISNs support different numbers of phases, such as the one shown here, or may support DC input power. In addition to differences in basic specifications, some LISNs have additional features, such as high-pass filters, limiters, remote control capability, etc. Let's look at a conceptual schematic of a LISN, taken from Annex A of CISPR 1612. The 5 microhenry inductor increases impedance with increasing frequency and its construction usually determines the maximum current rating of a given LISN. The capacitors help to both filter any incoming RF and decouple the power line. Finally, note that since the measurement port is part of the total LISN impedance, this port should be 50 ohm terminated when not in use. LISN stands for Line Impedance Stabilization Network, so it might be helpful to spend a few moments explaining what we mean by stable line impedance. The impedance seen looking into a standard AC or mains power outlet is largely a function of the wiring behind that outlet, and therefore this impedance will vary from location to location and from outlet to outlet. This isn't a problem for everyday use of power outlets, but in order to make conducted emissions testing repeatable between locations, that is, between different labs, the EUT should always see the same impedance at the mains end of its AC power line. Using a LISM between the EUT and the AC mains outlet provides a stable, normalized impedance over a given frequency range, usually the 150 kHz to 30 MHz range used for conducted emissions testing. If you're wondering how much the impedance of an AC outlet varies from place to place, this graph shows the maximum and minimum impedance values at 36 unfiltered outlets across the United States. Note that the impedance varied from a minimum of about 2 ohms to over 450 ohms over the frequency range used for most conducted emissions testing. This shows why a LISN is helpful in ensuring that a stable, known impedance is present regardless of location. Let's compare the curves on the last slide to a sample LISN impedance curve. 
Note that the impedance is very constant, close to 48 ohms, over the standard conducted frequency range. The steep drop off in impedance below 500 kilohertz is due to the 5 microhenry inductor in our standard Lizen schematic. Another primary function of a Lizen is blocking any RF noise from entering over the AC mains network. This ensures that any noise seen at the measurement port is coming from the EUT and is not being conducted in on the EUT's power cord. The inductor and capacitors in the Lizen work together as a low pass filter, passing the low frequency AC power but blocking any higher frequency signals. The third primary function of a Lizen is the measurement port. This 50 ohm port is used to connect the Lizen to a measurement instrument, such as an EMI receiver or an oscilloscope, in order to measure conducted RF signals produced by the EUT. In addition to this measurement function, the Lizen can also provide various types of protection to the sensitive inputs or front ends of measuring instruments. And as mentioned before, a Lizen may provide additional functions. One of these is an attachment for an artificial hand. This simulates the capacitive effect of the human body on a handheld device, for example, an electric drill. A switchable high-pass filter can be used to suppress certain types of low-frequency signals, like those from switched mode power supplies. Transient limiters may be provided as a means of protecting the measurement instrument from large voltage spikes. And finally, remote control allows a listen to be controlled by an attached measurement instrument or by an automation environment. So in summary, a LISN, or Line Impedance Stabilization Network, is used in conducted EMC emissions testing. A LISN provides three main functions. First, as the name implies, a LISN provides a stable line impedance for the equipment under test, which greatly improves the repeatability of results between different test locations. A LISN also blocks incoming RF signals to ensure that we're measuring emissions from the EUT and not signals that are being conducted in over the mains network. And finally, a LISN provides a measurement port for attaching test equipment such as an EMI receiver, spectrum analyzer, or oscilloscope. Some LISNs also provide additional functions such as filtering, limiters, and the ability to control the LISN remotely. This concludes our presentation, Understanding LISNs. Thanks for watching.